Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to answer a question from one of our subscribers. And they say to me, Steve, no matter how hard I try, when I get under pressure, I cannot stop myself pushing the racket through the ball. I don't make too many mistakes, but I lose loads of power and I'm losing to people who I shouldn't lose to. I got a simple solution for this that should work straight away. Now, although most of us dislike playing against pushers, not many people actually want to be a pusher. There's a limit to how far it will take you in the game, and it's not a fun way of playing the game. So let's have a look at what pushing is, and what the alternatives are, and how we can avoid pushing in our strokes. I think in terms of tennis, there's a very simple definition. Pushing is when I push against a resistance in front of me. So if I now imagine that there's a heavy weight in front of this racket, I now push through and make the stroke. And the stroke will be maybe a correct shape, but it will be laborious and slow, but have very good control. To avoid being a pusher, we need to throw the racket through the stroke. But throwing the racket within the stroke is a very unnatural movement for a lot of people. But what we've got to understand is that pulling and throwing are almost identical. So if I imagine that instead of pushing against a resistance in front of me, the ball that's going to come, if I imagine that somebody is holding my racket from behind me, and now I have to rip the racket out of their hands and pull through the stroke. And the stroke will then have a totally, totally different feeling. A great way of practicing this and achieving the feel of it is to use a resistance band. So now I've just attached a simple resistance band to the fence post. And what I'm going to do is hook the racket through the resistance band. And now, stepping maybe one half a step in front of where the resistance starts, I'm going to let the racket drop and lag, and then pull forwards. And I feel the resistance from behind. And the resistance is strong. And I'll do it three or four times. And then I take the racket out of the resistance band and recreate the same feeling. And now the racket is projected through the stroke with force, power, and with freedom. And then I'm going to reverse engineer and I'm going to imagine myself pushing. And then I'm going to imagine myself pulling. And back to pushing and back to pulling. And now I can really feel the difference between the two movements. If you add pulling into your strokes on the forehand, the backhand and the serve, then you always get more power and spin. And you keep the control because you're swinging fast enough to truly affect the flight of the ball. So try to add pulling into your game. And remember, if you can't get the feeling, just use a resistance band on the racket instead of the normal traditional way on the arm, and you'll find racket speed and spin that's easier and faster than you believe possible. I hope this makes sense. I'd love to know how it works in your game or your player's game. You know I try to reply to every single comment. We really love your feedback. And to practice this, have a look at our partners, playyourcourt.com. They send professional tennis coaches direct to your area and direct to your local court. It's a fantastic service. The information on their membership is in the comments section below. And maybe I can help you more with your game. Have a look at the website and see what online coaching can do for you. It's a unique service and we're helping players of all ages, all levels and all over the world. So remember to add power and spin to your game. Stop pushing and start pulling and you'll find that you have faster, more successful and more powerful ground strokes. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.